Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you're looking for valuable information that can help you manage your cattle business, you're in the right place. We'll bring you expert insights from Cattlemen's College, the cattle industry's premier educational event. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. If you're looking for ideas and information that can make a difference in the profitability of your cattle operation, you're in the right place right now. This week, we're sharing some of the outstanding insights from Cattlemen's College. Each year, there are many things to see and do at the Cattle Industry Convention an NCBA trade show, but this one-of-a-kind producer education event always draws a crowd. Reporter Matt Fleck takes a closer look at Cattlemen's College and why it's such a big hit among cattle producers. Education was the focus for the first days of the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show, as thousands of cattle men and women took part in Cattlemen's College. This event is known for its valuable sessions that can help generate higher returns for any operation. At Cowman's College, we have speakers from all across the country that are the leaders in their fields, and producers can come and hear presentations and get that knowledge and take it back to their farm or ranch to help uh, improve profit or help them uh, have a more efficient or sustainable uh, program. The college is very important to us. It's where we can come together, you know, in one place and have a really a big variety of speakers that would take us a lot of time and a lot of travel to get to any other ways. Cattlemen's College has become the gold standard for educational seminars with more than 15 sessions focused on improving the profitability, productivity, and ultimately the sustainability of farms and ranches. For years, Zoetis has been the proud sponsor of this important event. To see audiences like we've seen here today and yesterday, numbered in the hundreds of people that are really hungry for not only knowing about new innovations, but then how to, in a practical way, incorporate them back home in their day-to-day -day operations. It's very encouraging and um, it's neat to see so many progressive beef producers. I've been coming to NCBA convention as long as I can remember uh, at the uh, you know at, at the foot of my parents and when that when Cattlemen's College started and, and Zoetis and their team to help promote this program uh, it just added a whole new dimension to the convention to me. There are many great sessions, and it's tough for attendees to see everything that may be of interest. The good news is that Cattlemen's College participants can go online and check out the presentations they missed. If they don't get to come to Cattlemen's College, or if they are here and they miss a session they really wanted to see, they can go to beefusa.org and click on the, Cattleman, the producer education tab, go to the Cattlemen's College online campus, and if they were attendee, they get the link emailed to them so they can see them for free already, but if they weren't, they, it's a pay to play, so they can pay, unlock the packages, and get to watch those presentations. The organizers of Cattlemen's College are always looking for feedback to help plan future sessions, which helps to ensure this remains the industry's premier educational event. I think one thing that's helped over the years is we always try to poll um, participants in Cattlemen's College uh, to gauge their reactions to presentations such that each year we can have the information necessary to build upon that and then also keep track of industry trends and emerging topics and issues and opportunities so that we can hopefully keep the programs very timely and informative as, um, as the industry changes. I make it a point to engage with our attendees. I like to hear you know, what sessions they're going to, what they like about the session, what might make the session a little better. And if we don't have a topic uh, for them this year, I ask them, you know, what would you like to hear next year? Um, that way we can go ahead and start planning for that. Cattlemen's College is just one of the many reasons more than 9,000 people, which is a record number, attended the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA trade show in Nashville. 
What I see with Cattlemen's College is it has helped bring a whole new group of producers to the NCBA convention to take an active part in our organization, in our cattle industry. Uh, you know, not all of us can serve on a committee, but we can all come and attend the trade show, come and attend the Cattlemen's College, build those relationships and take home information that'll help us be better producers. Reporting from Nashville, Tennessee, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. And joining us now to talk more about Cattlemen's College is Josh White, Executive Director of Producer Education for NCBA. Josh, tell folks, what's the overall goal of Cattlemen's College in the first place? Well, primarily to educate cattlemen on production issues that'll help them go home and make a difference on their farm or ranch, you know. Um, make more money, improve the quality of life for their family, their, their workers, and the cattle. And how do you go about selecting the, the speakers and presenters? You always have such a great lineup of presenters. We have a, a large group that we pull together to uh, form a working group, and that changes every year. So what we try to do is reach out to some academics and extension professionals. We try to get folks that are in the general area that we're going to be holding our convention that year so that we have some topics that are a little more regional. Um, we also bring in our state affiliate staff, the folks that work on Cattlemen's College at a local level in that community, so we're not covering the exact same thing that maybe uh, Tennessee Cattlemen's, for instance, right. covered at their convention right. this past year to, to create some diversity there. Um, so yeah, we pull from, from experts throughout the, the uh, country and also producers that are cutting edge. You know, what uh, some people may not realize is uh, the diversity of topics you cover. There really is something for every segment of the industry, isn't there? That's right. I mean, we try to incorporate uh, information on what consumers are thinking out there. Sometimes we do cutting demonstrations or even go into cooking or barbecuing, all the way to, you know, risk management, uh, feed yard management, you know, some really practical stuff. We had a panel on on how we're managing cattle in the feed yard today this past year that was outstanding and and from diverse feed yards you know one was more of a natural type feed yard one more that we would call conventional or traditional sure. so we want producers to be able to hear from other producers mm -hmm. to be able to hear from academic experts at the cutting edge and also to be able to communicate with each other about you know what what's being successful at their own farm and ranch and while there's nothing quite like being there and having an opportunity to interact with the speakers and and, and the other workshop attendees it is true that the last couple of years you've made this available online, right? That's right. Yeah. So you can go to the producer education tab at beefusa.org and find additional information under the Cattlemen's College section. You can go back and purchase one specific um, session that you might have just really wanted to see but you weren't able to get to San Diego or even the year before in San Antonio. Those are still up. Mm -hmm. um, or if you want to try to view the whole group, you know, uh, A to Z through the Cattlemen's College, you can buy that for a little um, increased fee. So it's, uh, you know, we, we know that, that nothing replaces the value of being there, yes. but this is the next best thing. Absolutely. So. And while this is a very high profile activity that you and your team uh, organize every year, tell folks about some of the other producer education activities you all are responsible for. Yeah, we've tried some new things in the last few years. Uh, one of the most successful has been our webinar series. We've covered a wide variety of topics and we record those. Those are also available for free online. So again, at that producer education tab, you can, you can find a webinar tab. And we usually every few months are doing another webinar. So you can go there and sign up for the next one, or you can review our past webinars and, and see if you want to go back and watch one. NCBA really has a commitment to continued education. And why is producer education so important to this organization? Well, obviously, just like we talked about, the purpose of Cattlemen's College is to, to increase your profitability at the, at the ranch level. You know, the other thing is that we have to continue to, uh, to make strides because consumers expect that too. Amen. So, you know, the sustainability message is not going away. And um, while some consumer or some producers may get a little nervous about that term, essentially that's about being more efficient and more profitable. Mm -hmm. And um, all of those things tie together beautifully and, and we've got to become educated to do a better job um, to make any of that happen. Right? Thanks so much for coming. I appreciate that. Thanks for having me, Kevin. The next edition of Cattlemen's College will take place at next year's Cattle Industry Convention. You can also go to the website beefusa.org for all the details on this can't-miss event. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you'll learn some great tips for improving your operation's bottom line. Don't go away. We'll be right back. 
Do you know all you need to about working cattle? Did you know there are proven methods that can reduce stress for the animals, for you, and for your crew? Learn from the experts who can help sharpen your stockmanship and stewardship skills. By attending a stockmanship and stewardship event, you'll learn proven ways to work cattle more efficiently, skills that can help put more money in your pocket. Find out more and locate a training session near you at the website stockmanshipandstewardship.org. Want more profit out of your pasture? Then here's our two cents on using parasite control to make some dollars. In a trial of calves, long-range outperformed Cydectin and Safeguard dewormers combined by as much as an extra 40 pounds. Yeah, that's a lot of extra profit. And that's why it pays to treat cattle with long-range. Do not treat within 48 days of slaughter. Not for use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older, including dry dairy cows or in veal calves. Post-injection site damage can occur. These reactions have disappeared without treatment. You can't afford another season without long-range. One goal of Cattlemen's College is to provide sessions that can help generate higher returns for your operation. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter takes a closer look at one class that offered tips to help producers improve the value of their cattle. With uncertain market prices and steady to higher production costs, it pays for cattle producers to work every angle to improve their economic returns. That was the key point in a Cattlemen's College session called Adding Value and Opportunity. Jerry Wolf of Wolf Cattle and John Schroeder of Dar Feed Yard spoke to a full house of cattlemen and women from all across the country. They all came to this session with the same goal, wanting to identify new ways to achieve success by thinking outside the box. The key takeaway was maybe thinking different on how we raise and market cattle and really being proactive to consumers' concerns and that how if we can listen to them, there's opportunity to capture value. And also, if we take a good hard look at our production system, there's opportunities to do that without raising costs. Jerry says consumers today want not only a great beef eating experience, but they also care how the industry raises and produces its product. Jerry says paying attention to those needs and giving consumers what they want is one strategy for improving profits. The opportunities is, is to listening to the consumer, what the consumers want, staying nimble enough that we can be proactive and go back and produce product that, that they're comfortable, trust, and are happy to buy. We found it's a lot easier to have what the customer wants than convince them what they need. They're asking for things such as antibiotic free, no hormones, you know, cattle raised in a specific way. You target those markets, there's opportunity to capture more value. This Cattlemen's College session offered some real world examples of how producers can improve profits on their own operations Jerry shared a couple of thoughts he hopes his fellow cattlemen and women will put to work. Two things. One is get yourself aligned with other segments that you don't operate in in the industry so that we can be part of a whole complete production system. And then the other one is, is let's not forget complementary crossbreeding and, and not have one breed of cattle try and be everything for the industry. Working together we can be better than working apart. The good news? Demand for beef is strong, which means there will still be profit opportunities for all segments of the beef industry in the years ahead. We've had some supply challenges in the last couple of years that have led to high markets and then followed by low markets. Uh, 2016, uh, due to our dollar, we got some export import imbalances that are creating some challenges, but there's still going to be opportunity here. And, and, uh, Things look good in the long haul for the beef, beef industry. Reporting from Cattlemen's College, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattlemen to Cattlemen or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from around the country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash cattleman to cattleman. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, managing cattle is one thing, 
But how can doing a better job managing people make a difference on your ranch? We'll explain. Plus, expert advice for younger ranchers looking to establish their own identity in the beef industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, I think a rancher has to be a steward of the land. There's nobody else that can take care of land better than a rancher. When we switched over to the Perino products, it was a step in the right direction. The difference we see in the cattle is the consistency of their nutrition. The cattle hold their condition a lot better throughout the whole year. It does make a difference that we can see, day in and day out. No matter what job I've got to do, my John Deere 5 e tractor can do it all. Whether I'm cutting, moving feed, or building a fence. Using my 5e means my work gets done faster at a price I can afford, and that works for me. Welcome back. NCBA takes great pride in being the premier source of producer education, and this is especially evident each year at Cattlemen's College. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brad Bulla has more on one class that examines some of the challenges young producers face when establishing their own identity in the beef industry. Sometimes the road back to the cattle business and the family ranch isn't a straight one. That's the message Dan McCarty shared at the Cattlemen's College session called Finding a Way Back to the Ranch. The great thing about our business is everybody has a pretty unique story about how they got to where they are today. Uh, I was able to just share my story about what we do uh, and how we slowly have built it over time. Dan grew up with the intention of one day rejoining his family's cattle business, but his career path took some detours. As a result, Dan ended up building his own operation, McCarty Cattle Company, while at the same time serving as Director of Industry and Affiliate Outreach for NCBA. I'm not exactly what you would call a, a full-time rancher or a traditional rancher. Uh, I think I'm similar to a lot of people in my generation uh, in that because of that. So I have a full-time career and then another full-time career back at the ranch. Sure, I wanted to be running a couple thousand cows, but uh, that's not what life has presented to us. But we were able to take, uh, identify our passions, take the opportunities we were given, and, and go, go find those things. Getting started in the cattle business can be difficult. Dan says he and many others in his generation were discouraged from getting into production agriculture by cattlemen and women who lived through the farm crisis of the 1980s and knew the business could be challenging. But Dan and many of his peers decided to follow their hearts. So those of us that are actually in production agriculture now would probably be considered rebels because we did the exact opposite of what our parents and all the people around us told us to do. But we figured out that was our passion uh, and we're here. What was so impressive to me is um, how they are being so creative in the ways that they are finding their way uh, back to their passion, back to what they have grown up to love about their, their business. And so they're, um, they're collaborating and partnering and getting creative about uh, cow lease arrangements and doing uh, a lot of off-farm work to fund their uh, cow-calf enterprises in this case and so I really appreciate the creativity that um, this generation is bringing to their journey back to the family operations. For Dan McCarty, getting creative meant that instead of taking over his family's operation, he ended up needing to start his own and he did so while owning no land. So he sought out leasing opportunities to find a place to run his cattle. Sometimes uh, all you really have to go do is ask. Uh, you're going to get told no. Being told no is a definite learning experience, but you're never going to get told yes if you don't go ask. Both Dan and his wife work off the ranch to diversify their income opportunities beyond their cattle business. One key point Dan emphasized with the Cattlemen's College audience was the need to be flexible in setting and reaching your goals. I think it's very important that we all have the big picture in our mind of where we want to go. But I think sometimes we get a little too stuck in that picture. Uh, and life happens and changes happen and 
you kind of have to roll with the punches. You constantly have to make adjustments uh, and some recalibrations to figure out where you're going and where you've been uh, and what actions you need to take to get where you want to be. Uh, but that's all part of life, just rolling with the punches. So you, you got to be pretty flexible when it comes to those plans. Dan says young producers need to take some risks while also being realistic. And he says it's a good idea to get involved, network with others in the cattle business, and build your own informal board of directors, a core group of people you can trust who will give you sound advice. And even though getting back into the ranching business may not be a straight line, he says the effort to get there is worth it. I see great opportunities and potential for people getting involved in production agriculture right now. Uh, we have a world economy that is growing. People are hungry. They want our product. Uh, we're the best in the world at producing it. The opportunity is out there. Uh, you just have to be af uh, not afraid to go out there and find it. Reporting from Cattlemen's College, I'm Brad Bullet for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. There are a number of great reasons to become a member of NCBA, and one of them is the chance to read the National Cattlemen. It provides timely news and articles about issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member of NCBA. Joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll have expert tips for managing one of the most important resources on a ranch, the people. Plus, learn how a comprehensive herd health program can make a positive impact on your bottom line. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Say goodbye to your toughest pasture and rangeland weeds for good. Because one product offers season long control, handles the widest spectrum of broadleaf weeds and clears the way for increased forage with greater grazing flexibility. So you get more beef per acre at a cost that can't be beat. It's Grazon Next HL Herbicide. And if it's in your pastures, plain and simple, weeds won't be. Out here, we're hostile, cold, and cruel. Our way of life There's no better way to live. Guts. Glory. Ram. Human resource management is a term often associated with the corporate world, far away from ranching and rural lifestyles. But the cattle industry needs people. And many managers will admit it's becoming increasingly difficult to find and keep good employees. Reporter Russell Nemitz has more on one Cattlemen's College class that offered insights on how successful ranches manage their workforce. Finding, motivating, and keeping productive employees is one of the most challenging responsibilities for owners and managers of any organization, including cattle operations. While we don't often think of people as a resource, properly managing employees can make a huge difference on an operation. Today, to successfully manage a ranch is more about, um, more than just managing livestock and land and natural resources, it's really, um, it's really critical to get the human resource piece right um, in today's environment. Uh, relationships are extremely important. There's not only are we shrinking in cattle numbers, but we're shrinking in qualified people to work on those operations. And so we need to do everything we can to find, motivate, and retain employees on, on ranches today. Human resource management on the ranch was one of many valuable classes offered during Cattlemen's College at the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention. The goal of the session was to give participants a greater understanding of the skills needed to lead, manage, and supervise their workforce. We went out and we interviewed some ranch managers that we've worked with over the years, and we got their advice and 
thoughts on how we can do a better job of managing people on ranches. And so with that, they provided us with some ideas to think about if we're hiring part-time or full-time people and making sure that we're finding the right fit for the operation. Whether you have 50 employees or just a handful, the human resource experts stressed that you need to encourage worker participation rather than simply giving orders and then checking if the job was done. Communication is the key to keeping everyone informed and engaged with the operation. So really it is about figuring out the best way to keep those communication lines open because that's really what's going to allow the jobs to get done and get done well. Working with younger employees was another big topic of conversation in this session. Specifically, how do you best communicate with a generation that you may have trouble relating to or understanding? That number of younger individuals is certainly going to grow with time as those younger folks enter into the industry, return back home to take over farming or ranching enterprises. And so we need to make sure that we're able to communicate across those different generations. And that's one of those things that nobody quite has found the silver bullet yet. But I think that by having these discussions about how do we communicate, recognizing there's communication style differences, and then trying to adapt the way that our generation communicates with different generations can certainly help break down some of those barriers. It's important to remember that younger workers often have different motivations than previous generations. If you develop a management style that properly engages these ranch employees, you'll often find that workforce performance and job satisfaction soars. Today we were really focused on money related things to, to incentivize people, salary increases, and bonuses based on personal achievement, right? Those are important to employees today. As we think about millennials moving in, some of the more intrinsic things might become more important, meaning the pat on the back, the opportunities for advancement, the recognition from a manager that you're doing a good job because they need to have a passion for things and they need to feel like they're solving the world's problems. Supervisors must also provide clear job descriptions to employees, defining procedures and expectations can contribute greatly to employee job satisfaction and productivity while also helping ensure that ranch practices and goals are being met. This is an area where we need to do more research and develop more tools for producers to use because there's obviously a lack of people developing good job descriptions, there's a lack of people rewarding people, there's a lack of, of managers um, having feedback conversations with folks and a lot of it is just they just don't have the resources to do that and so we need to go back and go to work developing those tools. The good news, with a little time and effort, anyone can learn the skills necessary to find and keep high quality employees. Reporting from San Diego, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We've talked about the people, now let's focus once again on the best ways to manage your cattle. A comprehensive herd health program can go a long way towards putting money in a producer's pocket. Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Brian Baxter reports on one class that offered tips to help ranchers improve the value of their calves. Each day, America's farmers and ranchers strive to provide safe, high-quality beef for consumers. New management protocols and technologies are combined with time-honored methods to keep cattle healthy by preventing, controlling, and treating disease. Producers recognize ensuring an animal's well-being is the right thing to do and critical to their operation's success. We want a healthy calf going into the feedlot so that that calf in the feedlot has a great experience in the feedlot, stays healthy, eats really well, produces a fabulous carcass for the consumer. Dr. Mark Hilton hosted a Cattlemen's College session during the 2016 Cattle Industry Convention in San Diego called Producing High Health Calves. My main focus was to let people know that this is a very long-term process. It's a multifactorial process. It's not just giving the correct vaccinations at a certain time. It's, it's integrating nutrition and environment and genetics along with vaccinations and health to produce the healthiest calf that we can possibly produce. Mark stressed to the crowd that there's no one-size-fits-all vaccination program and each must be tailor-made to fit the individual needs of your farm or ranch. That's why it's critical to have a trusted group of advisors such as your veterinarian or nutritionist that you can turn to for advice and information. 
build a team. You know, there's not a person out there raising cattle that has all the knowledge to do, to do everything. I'm a big team guy. I like to surround myself with people smarter than me so that we can work together with the producer just, you know, to make the, the end goal. Does that mean having a PhD nutritionist on your small cow calf farm? Probably not but it means maybe talking to your veterinarian and that veterinarian says, hey, you know, I work really closely with this nutrition company and they've got a great nutritionist on board and, and let's, let's get him on our team together so we work, can work better. It's also important to remember that developing a herd health plan shouldn't tie you to a single course of action because the most effective protocols are flexible. We write these things on paper and pencil so that we can erase it and, and change it. It's, you know, if you're doing the same thing you've done for the last 10 years, I, you know, name a business that that's their, that's their business model. It just, it doesn't, that doesn't work. Mark says there's no way to guarantee your cattle will always bring top market prices, but he hopes his management and marketing tips will help farmers and ranchers continue to provide a safe and wholesome product. You know, if somebody takes from what I said in that talk and goes home and does better, that's, you know, that's my goal is to have, have somebody do better. The consumer wants, you know, lean, tender, juicy beef. And if we can keep that calf healthy, we've got a better chance to produce that product that the consumer really wants. Reporting from Cattlemen's College, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Do you want to see all of this session or maybe check out one of the other classes? Well, good news. All the presentations were recorded and can be accessed through the Cattlemen's College online campus. Just visit beefusa.org for all the details. Still ahead, we'll have the latest from Baxter Black, plus valuable tips on passing your farm or ranch to the next generation. Stay with us. What does it mean to be dependable? It means you do what you say you'll do time and time again. Because performance isn't optional, and your task is essential. For over 95 years, we have proven ourselves to be the most dependable choice. That's why the cattlemen of this great nation trust Ritchie to provide fresh water on demand. Ritchie, proud to be a partner to the American cattlemen since 1921. Tough Fence will last three times longer and is four times stronger than low tensile fencing. High tensile wire, solid vertical stays, and tight fixed knots all provide superior strength. You will use fewer posts, saving time, labor, and money. Protect your investment for generations with Stay Tough Fence. Stay strong. Stay tight. Stay tough. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen on RFD-TV. We've been talking today about Cattlemen's College and bringing you highlights from some of the many great sessions over the years that have offered valuable tips for improving your operation. Now, Cattlemen to Cattlemen reporter Russell Nemitz reports on a couple of classes that provided advice on working with family and how to pass an operation on to future generations. Developing a plan to transition a cattle operation from one generation to the next can be a daunting task. That's one reason why the session at Kettleman's College on Generational Transfer was such a popular attraction. Well, it's something that's kind of currently happening uh, on our place right now, so looking for a little more insight. There's always a lot of unanswered questions and, and I think everyone kind of wants to know where to turn next and how do we proceed so just came to get a little more insight on some things like that and take some ideas back home. It's something that I think every farm family addresses and that needs to be a priority because you can either make or break the future of an operation by how you make those transitions. This is a big big issue and uh, everybody needs to do it and uh, I have got uh, things in place but uh, there are always things that you can learn. You always pick up some good pointers and some good ideas which I have from this session. It's important to be proactive when establishing a succession plan and it's never too soon to start thinking about the eventual transition of an operation to the next generation. 
I think definitely um, just ask the questions, open up those doors. Don't do it at Christmas, don't do it at Sunday lunch. Set a special time aside, call a business meeting, a family planning session, whatever you want to call it, and make it that. Don't interrupt Mother's Day with something like this. But just go ahead and, and break the ice and, and do it. It gave me peace of mind when I had it done, when I, when I got things uh, laid out and uh, the will and everything in place, and uh, I felt a relief. Everybody needs to do something. Even a start, get something written down and, and make sure that uh, you have a, a succession plan. Getting along with family members is also an important part of the succession process. And another class at Kettleman's College focused on the techniques for maintaining successful relationships on the ranch. One important step is making sure everyone understands their role within the operation. I think the challenge though is how are you going to come back in? Are you going to come back in as a, essentially a laborer and get you know, th three square meals a day and a pickup to drive? Or are you actually going to move up into the management of this business? I talk a lot about allowing the younger person that's coming on these places to somehow make meaning out of it. And what I mean by that is it's important for them when they come on the operation to have the opportunity to make decisions and to be on a growth curve of their own in the family business so that they have a chance to experience what it is to see this business maybe diversify, getting larger, adopt new technologies, whatever, but allows the, this farmer ranch over some period of time to kind of be their own. It's one thing to have a plan, it's another to implement it. Um, it's one thing to, you know, be equal with uh, three children. I've got two siblings. It's another thing to be fair. So, um, you know, there's all sorts of uh, questions and concerns that we uh, battle every day when it comes to working with family. Like I say, we've talked about it, but uh, this has prompted us to do so even more, and, and I'm pleased that it has. And uh, I think it's a lot tougher for my father because he's got two sons that are uh, still on the ranch and a daughter that's uh, her and her husband have a place too so uh, it's I think it's it's very tough for him but uh, I think he wants a place to survive we've been there 102 years so want to keep seeing that going family members need to work together toward common goals the speaker stressed again that communication is the key to help develop trust and respect Again, it's the communication part of sitting around and talking about, you know, what are these attributes that these people are bringing to this business and to this family that are going to make this thing work. I think it's something that often gets put on the back burner because there's so many day-to-day -day tasks that have to be done, but that might be the most important thing we do um, in our operation is sit down with our family and make plans for the future and how we will bring back in future generations and what their contributions need to be. With a little foresight, planning, and some work, cattle producers can make sure their family operation runs smoothly now and in future generations. Reporting from San Antonio, I'm Russell Nimitz for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. One key to success in the cattle business is thinking not only about today, but also building for the future. That idea is part of the goal behind the National Cattlemen's Foundation, a nonprofit organization that supports programs aimed at advancing the future of the beef cattle industry. The National Cattlemen's Foundation's primary purpose is to maintain agriculture. You know, education is the key to that, but we want people to be able to to make a living and stay on the ranches. That's a real key. The far scholarships are our best known and biggest uh, programs right now. Uh, we have the CME scholarships. We have legacy gifts. There's one for W.D. Farr, Lynn Cornwall, uh, Paul Hitch, and Fred Johnson. One of the other programs we, we do through the foundation is the Environmental Stewardship Award. I mean, I really want to protect the environment in the keep ranchers on the land. And that's been a great program that the foundation runs. The National Cattlemen's Foundation offers two industry scholarships to inspire young people to pursue careers in the beef industry. One of these annual scholarships honors the memory of the late W.D. Farr, who dedicated his life to improving agriculture. The scholarship uh, program that we enjoy today actually started with the foundation. The foundation wanted to promote agriculture and this was an excellent way to do it. 
and they chose to name that after Dad. There's an opportunity there for young people to get involved in leadership roles, to make an impact, and these are going to be the leaders of this industry, and it takes a lot of people because it's a huge, huge industry. We know the intention of the scholarship is to give it to students who are going to make a difference, to serve as leaders and visionaries moving us forward. Um, we have people in their 20s and 30s receiving this scholarship that we know in 10 or 20 years will leave their mark on this industry and will forever recognize WD FAR uh, as, a, as a leaping point, as a jumping point with that scholarship, with the financial support. It just makes a huge difference for these students pursuing graduate degrees. It was really humbling the day that I found out that I won. And I mean, what a great man. I really enjoyed reading about his, his life and the contributions that he has made to the cattle industry. Now there's a unique way to support the National Cattlemen's Foundation by having your brand handcrafted and put in a place of honor on a living legacy wall. Each brand is cut from a steel plate and the wall has become a popular foundation fundraiser. There's a lot of people who really love the cattle industry and that, they're trying to protect that legacy and we want to give them a way to have that brand or you know, the patriarch's picture, you know, forever, you know, on our wall or on our website. And I think that that's significant for a lot of people. I have been very impressed with how people are very proud to have their brand on display at the NCBA offices. Um, they feel that it is part of the legacy that they are leaving. It's part of the legacy of being a rancher, of being a cowboy, of being uh, people who are in the cattle business. And so it's very important to them to have that display on the wall. The money supports the National Cattlemen's Foundation, which is a scholarship granting arm of NCBA. Uh, part of each one of those uh, brands goes to support the foundation. Whether you purchase a brand for the Living Legacy Wall, make a tribute gift in a person's memory, or simply donate to one of the many scholarship funds, you're helping to support the next generation of beef industry leaders. There's not an amount that's too small. What we'd like you to do is have you give us $100 every year when you, get, when you register for the convention. Every dollar helps. Simply write a check to the National Cattlemen's Foundation and send it to the NCBA headquarters. It would be properly taken care of and very much appreciated. We need to be able to protect agriculture, make it a, continue a viable business so that these families can stay families on the farm. To make a tax-deductible contribution to support the National Cattlemen's Foundation, you can donate in the NCBA trade show booth or go online to the website nationalcattlemensfoundation.org. Up next, it's time for our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Forward. It's more than a direction. It's mandatory. Because the beef business rewards the progressive, the doers, the ones who know what it takes to go easy on cattle and never set them back. So set your eyes on the horizon. Turn your back to the wind and move your herd the only way you know. Forward. Vista Vaccines. Always ahead. Blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention and there will be education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can't afford to miss the huge NCBA Trade Show. Well, I think the trade show is a great place to get new ideas. There's no better place for cattlemen and women to learn and connect with fellow producers from across the country. The NCBA trade show is one of the great reasons to attend the convention. There's so many things to see from vendors to livestock handling, demonstrations, to all kinds of things, meat cutting demonstrations. It is a wealth of information. Plus, there will be top-notch entertainment and information that will help the bottom line of your cattle business. So blaze a trail to Phoenix and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show, January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. If you're allergic to progress, I'll catch you later. 
How important is it for your vaccine, medicine, and poor on to be accurately administered? I mean, does a 376-pounder get the same medicine as a 400-pounder behind him? And how about your poor on? Cows can easily differ 100 pounds. Tapari has a pistol grip that automatically calculates the specific doses. It's amazing. You betcha. Squeeze shoot required. Check it out. Tapari.com. We know you're up before the dawn because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am iGlobal. I'm here to help you do just that. Andy summed up flying the best I've heard. If you're going to have to land in a field, always land with a rose. Although I had a momentary lapse of good judgment once and took a week's worth of flying lessons, I have since left that task up to more serious folks. People who don't stay up all night celebrating and can still actually reset the time on a digital watch. I know cowboys who are pilots. It's a frightening combination akin to a CPA who does nude modeling on the side. All they do is talk about flying, and if there's two of them at your table, your brain goes numb after five minutes. But for good reason, many Western ranchers have taken up flying. They can check windmills, count cows, and chase coyotes without having to open a gate. Roy hired a local boy to pilot him over his ranch to thin out the coyote population. The plane was a single engine super cub, the side door dropped down, the hunter straps himself in and leans out the door, cannon in hand. It is not a job for the faint hearted. The pilot followed Roy's directions and was soon swooping down on the crafty coyotes while Roy blazed away with his 12 gauge. Suddenly, the plane began to shake like a wet dog. Roy, in his exuberance, had led the coyote too much and shot the tip of a one propeller blade. With heroic control, the young pilot landed the plane on a stretch of rutted wagon road. He shut her down and staggered out into the brush and rocks, visibly shaken. He was just thankful to be on the ground. His prayers were interrupted by an explosion. He dived for the dirt and smashed his new aviator sunglasses in the process. He looked back and Roy was standing in front of the plane holding the smoking 12 gauge. I evened him up, Sonny. She ought to fly okay now. He'd shot the tip off the other end of the prop. Did they make it? You bet your shirt tail they did. It vibrated a little bit, but no worse than driving down a railroad track at 100 miles an hour. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks again, Baxter. We always enjoy your segments. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women across the country. So check us out on Facebook. We'll have more Cattlemen to Cattlemen right after this. Don't go away. There are many great reasons to join NCBA, and that includes exclusive NCBA member-only discounts, such as savings on new equipment purchases from New Holland. Hi, I'm Mike Corman with New Holland Agriculture, and I'm pleased here to talk about our New Holland member benefits to the National Cattlemen's and Beef Association members. New Holland offers special benefits to NCBA members where they can save up to $1,000 off the purchase of a new New Holland equipment. Members can save off the purchase of New Holland hay and forage and mid-range tractors, as well as other products. We have New Holland dealers located throughout the United States. Stop into your New Holland dealer and learn more. New Holland and NCBA, smart partners for agriculture. Savings on equipment purchases from New Holland is just one of the fantastic deals you get as an NCBA member. Don't miss out. Join NCBA today at BeefUSA.org. 
blaze a trail to Phoenix, Arizona and the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the cattle industry's biggest convention with education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the huge NCBA Trade Show, outstanding entertainment, and more. Don't miss the 2018 Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Phoenix, January 31st through February 2nd. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. Welcome back. Every day on the farm or ranch, while we do our work, we're also blessed to witness amazing scenes from sunrise to sunset. And it's always great when a camera's handy to capture these special moments. We encourage our viewers to share those images with us. So let's take a look at this week's crop of legacy photos. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots at our website, cattleman to cattleman.org. Well, that's our time for this week's special Cattleman's College edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week right here on RFD TV.